Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 12 of What If Naruto Was the Greatest Puppeteer. Remember to get this one to 200 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Travel to Hoshirama's Time and enjoy that guys over on Anime King 2. So get your drink and your snack and sit back and relax guys. And remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King and Anime King 2, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Let's begin this new episode. Start the intro. So, the last part we left off, as Naruto came up with a plan, along with his contacts back in Kumo, as he was able to make them sneak Hanbei in and also sneak her out of there, as both her and Naruto came up with the perfect story. He didn't know why but he had no feelings of Hanbei was going to betray him, as the upset thing she was about was that she couldn't make to practice her art until she showed some interest in Naruto art. As Naruto reported this back, to the Hokage and Jerry was there as well about his contacts as he was baiting the Hokage not to think anything about it. So the Hokage did not ask Naruto as Hayashi thanks Naruto before he leave. But the man wanted to thank Naruto some more but he had to go and check on his daughter. As Naruto made his way there when Hanabi asked her him as Hinata hugged Naruto she couldn't help but hug him tight as she was so happy. She was so happy that Hanabi was back as she thanked him over and over again for what he did as he told her it wasn't a big problem. As Hayashi spoke to him one side, as he thanked Naruto and told him that the Hayuga clan would be indebted to him for what he did, the man was truly grateful. As Naruto went inside and talked to Hanabi, the both of them talked, as everything was going according to plan. None of them had tried to go through her memories, because the Hayuga clan was very secret about their secrets, so they wouldn't allow the Yamnaka to go through her memories when everything was fine with her. So with that, Naruto went back home after some time, as he missed her, yes. Seeing the place empty without her, he missed her. But then he noticed something was wrong. His puppets hadn't been moved or anything, but something was just off. Something shifted slightly to the left that the ground was uprooted but now perfectly fine. As he sent struck her signature and also saw her ring was gone, as he made his way after it. As he jumped over the wall and made his way out of Kanoha, as he realized it was a trap, as Conan was out there. The both of them started the battle. As Naruto was quite interested in this kind of ability that she had. But he wasn't any pushover either. As Conan nuked the entire place, the explosion. As she knew that that wouldn't kill him because he's 9 tail Jinjulke. But Naruto summoned a giant puppet. As Conan was no match on the thing, clapped his arm together. Creating a mighty gust that threw her off balance and slammed her together. Smashing her body into the ground. As Conan was knocked out cold as Naruto sealed her away. He had to explain to the people that he got attacked, but the intruders retreated. But Naruto kept Conan as he was kept on bed rest for a while, seeing that he burned his arms badly when Conan knew the entire place. Although the fox was healing it, he got a lot of internal damage as well with the smoke and the fox could not help with that. So he was placed on bed rest for a while, and with that time he used it to make Hanabi talk about his art in puppetry as they were slowly getting to the point where she was going to ask him to teach her. As he went by the compound to find her, as he was still stumped on Conan's ring, as he had Conan sealed up at his apartment, as he wouldn't let her escape, he met up with Hinata as Hinata could sense other chakra signatures from the ring. Pain had met up with Akaski sometime before that, as Conan was missing, as Pain was going to wreak havoc on Konoha. He on Kakazu, all of them were ready and Konoha had some good bounties for Kakazu to enjoy. As Naruto was talking to Hinata, Hinata told that one of the signatures of this ring was in the village. As Naruto was shocked as hell, 
So yeah guys, those basic guys were left off, you guys can switch across to the page and check it out for yourself. So let's begin this new episode. What? Said Naruto. I said one of the rings are in the village, she said. As she neared her eyes towards the left, a long haired man with a pattern cloak. And he has... Huh? She said confused and a bit disgusted by what she saw. Small mouths infused with chakra. I don't recognize, she said. Naruto mind was racing a mile a minute that perfectly matched the description of Deidara, the Akatsuki bomber. He was in the village. Why? How? The pattern on his clothes is a cloud near the axe. She nodded as Naruto started to curse. Hinata was off foot by that. As she looked at him, something was wrong, she could tell. Hinata, is there anyone else in the village wearing that cloak? Naruto, you know I'm not supposed to use a Byakuren like that in the village walls. You know it's an invasion of privacy, she said. It's important, said Naruto. She might have refused, even for him, but... She saw the look in his eyes. And she saw that he was serious about something. Something was wrong. So she did. I'm sorry, there's too much people. It will take the whole clan to find that specific target that you're talking about, she said. Fine, said Naruto. Go and get to the Hokage as quick as possible and tell him that the Akatsuki is within the village and... He was cut off as an explosion threw the both of them off their feet. The backlash of the wind smashed against Aiga compound. The ground tremor and shook as explosions after explosions as smoke rise up in the air in the village. As he got to his feet quickly, go, Hokage, as he dashed towards the rooftops. As he saw Deidara, the man was making no effort to hide himself as he was standing on top of a tall building as he rained down explosives on Konoha. He then tossed something in the air. As the thing was glowing, it was about to explode as Naruto leaped off the building and summoned Azura. As he also called for Hain as she swooped down and grabbed him as Azura came out all titanic. As Naruto was looking down as he was being flown by Hain so he could make sure that no of the people were crushed down below him. As Azura caught the thing, Naruto thought it was a dud but the thing exploded. Azura's hand was reinforced with the first Akage's wood and strengthened by the Isise that he placed in it and his chakra. But her two arms, her upper arms, were blown off, just leaving the stump by the explosion. But at least she contained it. But the shockwave shattered all the windows around. But it could have been a lot worse. As he directed him to drop him, as he landed right on Azura's shoulder, as he spotted Daedra circling the skies on a clay bird. Daedra was yelling something at him, but he was too far away for Naruto to make out what. As he fired miniature dragons towards Naruto, Azura took her arm and she was about to swing it to bring them down. But a crackling lightning sound could be heard as they were brought down from the sky. As Kakashi landed on the other side of Azura's shoulder, swiping down all of the dragons that were coming down. Good catch, said Kakashi. Sorry about your puppet though, he said. As Naruto shrugged, although he was inwardly pissed, he already went up against Conan and she did a lot of damage to Azura. And now he was just getting around to fix Nick. And now this. Her upper arms are gone. Better her hands than the chunk of the village, said Naruto. As he looked back up at Deidara. As Naruto looked around as the other, chaos was going around, as he could tell. The Akaske, they were here. As Kakashi jumped off Azura's shoulder after she nodded Naruto, in a poof of smoke, she was resealed. She would cause more damage inside the village. Because she was too large, she might crush everything around her. As much as he wanted to help Kakashi, or take on the other members of the Akaske, he had to make sure that certain key areas was occurred. Firstly, the academy. It had nothing to do with Hanabi, not one bit. Civilians all were rushing towards Hokage's monument. Kono had just come out of a large war, and while the village was unhurt by that, the people were more than ready to rise to the occasion. Chonins and Jenny helped speed the process up, getting those to the bunkers quickly. Jonin swept the street, most of them going towards Hokage's tower, Anvu headquarters, some of them falling back towards the hospital, and also the academy. Sure, the tuning instructors would try to do their part, but they weren't going to hold up against not even one member of the Akatsuki. He figured their target was him, yes, for the Kayube, but one could not just walk in a village like that and took what they want and leave without any resistance. Their goal was mass chaos and Naruto could see that they were causing destruction all around so they could corner him and get him on side and then leave without being noticed in the chaos. In that case, he was going to make that as difficult as possible for them while Konoha pushed them back. No matter how powerful the Akatsuki was individually, there was no way they thought they could defeat that entire in the village by themselves. He had to put a stop on that thought though, as a large portion of water burst from a section of the village. 
like a contained typhoon it swell, forming a dome of water as it cover a good section of the village. The Akaski might not be able to defeat the village, but they can wreck it with all sorts of techniques. There was no warning when it happened. He was simply looking at the water dome and then next thing he knew, he was pulling himself out of the wall. Something hit him. Something hard. He hadn't seen it, so it was either fast or it was invisible. Almighty push. He rolled away as the wall behind him, most of the building that was attached to, was pulverized. It was literally blown away. He had no idea what that technique was. But he didn't want to get hit by it ever again as he looked up. Six figures landed in front of him. All of them wearing the Akaski clothing. You guys been on a recruitment drive, said Naruto. Trying to stall for time as head was still swinging from the impact. All of them had orange hair and similar piercings and those eyes. Clearly a dojutsu. Was it a family dojutsu or something? He couldn't say he recognized from anywhere. Purple eyes with black patterns. Kayubi Jinjuliki, you're coming with us. The Migalon said with a spike here that was similar to his own. You see, that is kind of a problem for me, said Naruto. As he flexed his shoulders. You see, I don't really want it, he said. You have no say in the matter, said Tendo Pain. As he had the same attitude as Conan. As he noticed the ring as well. Only the one that was speaking were the ring. That means the other five wasn't members of the Akasi as well. And the last clue. No, it can't be. Realization slammed into him as he recognized those eyes. He's reading into the symbolism behind the rings. It led him to the Sage of Six Path. All six of these men, they had the Renegon. So, you're this mysterious pain, said Naruto, keeping his voice calm to not show his panic. How was it possible that six people had a dojutsu that people consider a myth? He considered for a moment that they were brothers, but he dismissed it after that. The matches, orange, were clearly dyed. He recognized the subtle in all of their hair except for the leaders. And the piercing looked like some ecstatic. Not any kind of bonding or kinship between them. He was an artist after all, so he recognized those things. They were trying to create a group, a group that showed mysterious and power. Pain raised his arm as six puppets burst into action from Naruto. As one Rainia burst on the feet at the long ear man, she wrapped up his mud in an instant, sinking her teeth into his neck, pumping so much toxin it would give a boss some problem. As she had small needles all over her body, so he should be paralyzed by now. But the man flexed his arm and ripped Rainier right off of him. A thin bar came from his sleeve as he jammed it right in her chest. The moment he did not feel his control over the puppet, it vanished. A hain then burst in the alley as she tried to come at them. But something came from the sky, something that was blindsided by the sun. It stabbed right through hain with its beak. It was a strange bird as it then opened its mouth, ripping hain apart like it was nothing. A raccoon then rushed for the spike here one. It was perfect, he shouldn't have been able to see because Arakun was in a spot where he wasn't able to see her. But the man simply stepped to the side, dodging the acid. He turned and rushed forward as this one was larger than the others as he grabbed it by the throat and crushed it. When acid spilled on his hand from the puppet broken body, he didn't even cry out in pain. It did not even face him. Another Rainia burst towards the chubby one of the group. She didn't get a chance to constrict him. The moment she touched him, her body went limp, her chakra drained away completely. The hand that he sent after the ball hit the one didn't stand much of a chance either. As his arm rotated behind him in a strange way and grabbed her arms as he ripped them off without even turning his head to look at her. As another Rainia burst on the ground behind Tendo Pain, but he simply raised his hand and Rainia was blown to pieces. Well, damn, said Naruto. Six puppet destroyed, and he only caught a glimpse of their abilities. Your resistance is only prolonging the inevitable, said Pain. Naruto mind was racing to what he had just seen as summon of some kind. That one was able to absorb. That one had walls of incredible force or something, because he didn't see any of the attacks. He just spread out with force, probably was able to push things away from him. The other one had incredible strength. That one could shrug off poise like it was nothing. Was all of them like this? And that black rod that could sever its connection to its puppet. The weapons seem to be the same material as the piercing. They are most chakra conductors. Some kind of ability enhancers perhaps. Then it clicked in his mind. As Naruto wanted to laugh. Puppets. You. You guys are all puppets he said. The choices. How they synchronize with each other. 
the movements, the fact that one of them wore the ring, they're matching eyes. It all made sense to him. They were probably controlled to the piercing. Yes, chakra receivers instead of a connection by strings. Payne's eyes then narrowed, and he knew that he might have said too much, as the bulky one shot forward towards him. Before he could reach Naruto though, something fast smashed right into him, as a figure landed right between Naruto and Payne, as it was a staff that crashed into one of the pain that was sent sailing away. Our fight is not with you, Hokage, said Payne, seemingly unconcerned that one of his puppets' chests was cleaved right in. By the Hokage staff, the body just leave your limb, and hopefully down for the count. Hand over the Jinjouki and the Akasuke. Will, withdraw. The old man merely smiled at the self-proclaimed god of the Inurim. In my old age, I found out that compromise I have to make way more on my shoulders as the years go on. I'm an old man now and my shoulders are very, very heavy. You really think I'm going to add to that burden for the likes of you? As he spin his staff and drive it down into the ground. You attacked the wrong village today and I will ensure that you regret it. Meanwhile, Kisame couldn't wipe the grin off his face even if he wanted to. He never felt so alive. As Samita's scale slides right into a chonin, as Kisame jumped and kicked his body away, as he flashed through hand signs and fired off several dozen water bullets from his mouth, impacting towards the rest of the Konoha ninjas. Dynamic entry! He swung and brought Samihata up, but the force of the kick made his feet shook violently. As the person flipped off of Samihata and landed right in the water. Ah, most impressed in my fishy adversary. You are destroying much of my beloved village though. So it's up to I. Kanoha Green Beast put a stop to you. As he gave a blinding smile with his hand in a fighting motion to come. He's a main skull feeling Samihata anger for being used as a stepping stone. He was going to enjoy killing this one more than most. Meanwhile, Kakazu walked through the streets slowly. Barely having to tap into the power of its other hearts. His iron skin technique was more than enough for the weak shinobis that already tried to ambush him. They were nothing. These toddlers masquerading as true shinobis wouldn't know a good ambush even if they lived half to his age. Pathetic, he thought. It has been a long time since he's been in Konoha. Since that mountain over there was just a mountain. Personally, he found the Hokage's monument to be wasteful. Or perhaps it was just because of Hoshirama's face, looking at him, that smug look on his face. His treads came from his arm as he wrapped around a chonin that came at him and rip him in two. He probably wouldn't even find any decent heart out here. Hmm. He supposed a decent bounty would make up for it though. He wondered who would pay better for dead. Konoha Shinobis. Hmm. Maybe the stone or Kumo. As much as he loaded working with the snake, Urchimaru would also pay good for a few of these bodies. He took another step but he could not. His body was frozen but his threads were still able to move within him. I knew the Naras when they were just a group of gear hunters, he said. Hoshirama Forest destroyed the plains they used to roam, so he offered them a place in his new village. Fascinating, said a voice. I'll ask my dad about it after we make you leave. Probably. Kakazu suppressed a grunt as something stabbed through his back, missing his lightning heart by a few inches. He didn't feel a tingle of lightning shock as it was wind. It was powerful as well, because he get through his earth style. A smile came on his face. Saratobi Asuma, 35 million Ryuji he said. As he grinned, slowly turned to look at Shikamaru, as Ino, Choji was there as well. With a smirk on his face as he looked at Asuma, you are a worthy hunt, he said. Meanwhile, Hidan was grinning. This slaughter was great, it was beautiful, it was divine. The river of blood that he left in his path was wonderful as he brought his head around again and slashed on another fool. As he spin again and decapitated another ninja, a kunai slammed into his shoulder as he used it as a momentum to spin and slice right into another tune in shoulder. As he smiled at the sensation of pain as he pulled the tune in with his sight, driving the man to the ground before taking off the man's head. As he pulled the kunai out of his shoulder and threw it back at his attacker, a woman with red eyes, as she avoided easily. As she was quite beautiful, he don't have welcome her kunai like this in his cult. Well, if he didn't kill them all. He swung his sight as he smiled. I'm going to take extra pleasure, bathing in your blood. I wanted to know that, he said. As he shot forward, as he swung his sight, and it passed through nothing but air. As the woman burst into little red pebbles, he growled as the world started to shift around him. God damn it, I hate genjutsus. As he pulsed his chakra breaking out of it, but the moment he did a giant fist came raining down on top of him. Meanwhile, Daedra 
curse once again as that annoying Cyclops kept on neutralizing his C2 dragons. His opponent was using lightning that was neutralizing all of his bombs. As he got the wrong opponent, the guy who knew dozens of lightning techniques. As he created more sleek white bird, Kakashi speed through hand sign and casts his hand out like he was throwing a net in a way he was. A buzzing net of electricity spread out. But Dater made all these birds explode the moment he released them so they wouldn't be captured. As he used a smoke screen to turn in mid-air with his dragon. As three balls of clay flew forward as he burst. Hundreds of tiny little spiders spread out everywhere. He would like to see the silver here bastard deal with all of them. As the man strike most of them down but few of them latch onto his clothes. But he smirked as they never saw it the way his mask crinkled up as he exploded into lightning. Clone, they a curse. As he heard something behind him as Kakesh was right on the dragon back with him. As he dried his hand through Daedra without hesitation. But Daedra's skin started to lose color as he turned his body slowly. Kakashi's hand was in him so he couldn't move completely around. As a green note on his face. Guts! As he exploded. His lightning might have neutralized his clay clone. But he did nothing about the dragon that they were riding. Meanwhile, he got him over on the outskirts of the village. He knew that his eyes would be a great help to help Pain capture the Kayubi Jinjulge. That is why he was as far as possible from the attack that was going on inside. Saying that though, Pain needed nobody's help with anything. The man might not have been the god he claimed to be but he was probably the most strongest shinobi alive. As Itachi was certain that the man could demolish Konoha if he wished. But he was hoping that the man wouldn't be pushed to that point. Because Itachi would be forced to stop him and he was sure that he could. As he batted away the various shinobis that came across him as he knocked them out. As he looked towards the village, Konoha was strong, it was united, it would not fall that easily. Because if things get too bad, he will have to step in. Most importantly, Naruto Uzumaki had a spirit of always coming out and living. But Naruto was not the reason Itachi was here. Itachi! Almost precisely on time, he has been spreading his chakra so it could be felt. Most of them wouldn't have been able to sense it or feel it from the chaos that was going around. But Sasuke was not most. Little brother, I don't have time for you, he said. Why don't you run away and live? Last I remember, you were quite good at that. Itachi's eyesight was already failing him. But his brother didn't seem angry. It seems like someone has been teaching him how to control his anger. You're gonna pay for what you did, Itachi. It was an iceness, a Sasuke tone. This wasn't the hot-headed anger of youth. This was a cold, focused fury that would only make him stronger. Itachi lost a small smirk that came on his lips as he felt a subtle genjutsu come over him. Hmm. It seems his brother wastes no time to grow stronger. You think you can make me do anything? You are still. The little bl His eyes widened as he saw the copy of himself that he left in Sasuke vision, engulfing black flames. He saw his brother eyes. The next level of the Sharingan. You once told me, Itachi, that I would never be able to defeat you. Not until my eyes match yours. The cause of my Mangete was a friendship I would never get to experience because of the darkness you threw me into. As Sasuke break through the four layers of Genjutsu as he looked directly into his brother's eyes. So like I said, you're gonna pay for what you did to our clan, to our family, and to me. Meanwhile, Naruto has never seen Hokage fight before, but he will never forget it. In his youth, Hirsun was just a kindly old man in his funny hat. Then he was a man that doubted him, that drove a knife into his ambitions. As two of the pains dashed forward as Hirsun smiled, styling herself so rigidly on the path of Simsara was an audacious mistake as he brought up his staff and slammed it right into the chin of long gear one it was that he was faster or that he was better coordinated it was just that he could predict their movements where would they go it was like a sharing gun of experience the human path the only realm which one soul can leave the cycle of simsara i suppose it'd be quite dangerous to let that one get to me as heroes and staff propel him up into the air dodging the boss saw that came at him as its staff then came back to its original size, as Hirozun spin it and brought it back down, smashing it on the puppet's head. There was a strange, metallic sound. Shirdu, the Azure Path, the realms of demon that wage war on the gods, their body constantly shifting to become the perfect weapons. As he stood on top of his staff and speed through hand sign as it landed on the tour and seal before taking a deep breath. As a bird came creening down from the sky, he released a flame infused with wind turned the flame blue as the bird was incinerated 
poof him back to his own world. Juku Shodo, the animal path, a realm of constant suffering, driven by desire and raw instinct, ruled by only the strongest and most savage beasts. As he went through a handstand again, forming a small typhoon above his head, drawn from the pipes in the buildings, as he infused it with lightning, creating a mini storm over his head. The ground cracked under the holding of shocker that he was keeping up. The chunky pad that he already crippled got in the way. As the man absorbed the technique. Ah, Gikido, the pre the path. The realm of hungry ghosts, cursed to a constant existence of thirst. I have already dealt with you, which I expect is a work of. He was cut off as he had to flip backwards. As he kicked it forward towards the last of the human puppets lurking behind the rest. As Payne raised his hand but the staff burst into smoke as Enma emerged. As he leapt over the invisible force. As he landed right on the square draw past chest and brought his hand down and cracked the ground under the force when he smashed him. Don't tell me Hirazun. Chikudo, the Neruka path, said Enma. That's the one where all karma is dissolved and things can only get better, right? That would make this one the healer of the group if they stick to the pattern. Hiruzen nodded, so which in turn make you Tendo, the Deva path. A self-styled god, are you? I know a little something of that myself. As he raised his hand, Enma poofed into his staff form and flew right back towards him. I don't mean to lecture of course, but they don't call me the professor for nothing. All the paths around start to pick themselves up, not looking worse for wear. Despite the crushing strength of Hiruzen attacks, he had done little to really damage them. Yes, Sir Toby Hiruzen, as the paths surround him. You were once called the God of Shinobi, a title only shared by two in history. But I'm afraid that Kanoha will now know a new God. Both of your observations are merely correct. These are just vessels, bodies, come to deliver the word of pain. I believe I have a less to impart to you myself, Professor. Universal pull as he yanked Naruto towards him. Naruto extend chakra strides as they attach the wall. But he was ripped from them as he was pulled towards pain. As pain pulled a black rod. As pain drive the rod through Naruto's stomach. At the same moment Naruto's body started to glow. As it showed damage. As the chakra was erupted, all the explosive tags inside went off. Even pain that just stabbed him was thrown violently because of the explosion. As he smashed into a wall. Huh, never thought I'd be able to use that trick on a god. Said Naruto as a dozen of him were on the streets. As he was throwing his voice. As each of them paused. Before turning and sprinting off, Payne's body weren't full easily though, as the Renegons saw through the fakes to the real one. All six of them took off after him, only four, Tendo, the animal path, and the revival path to get cut off as a building collapsed right in front of them. As Hurzen dropped down right in front of the three of them, if you think I would allow you to run freely in my village, you're sadly mistaken, he said. With Naruto, building exploded behind him as he dashed down a street. As he hoped it would cover his... Well, it wouldn't. Because anything one of the pains saw, the other one saw as well. He found it out the hard way when he tried to double back and ambush one. It only earned him a nasty burn in the arm. As he had to watch out for that robot puppet. That one wasn't even the worst. It was a pre path. It was proven to be a nightmare. Able to drain the chakra from anything around it. As Naruto puppets start to lay traps all around him. Using the little time frame that they have. As he had a good map in his memory, but the robot pat was blowing everything up just to get to him. He was using the technique he got to see through his puppet eyes, but the vision he saw was limited at best. And not to mention he was using 5 of them, he was trying to watch like 5 scream at once, while someone threw a kunai at you. Actually, it sounded easy. As he spin around the next corner, as the absorption pat was right behind him, Raimi from next street over launched a small canister in the air, as it exploded outwards. Filling the sky with blinding light. He hoped that would prevent other two from seeing as Arakun emerged, her body turned. As the web burst from her body, filling the street. But the pre had stopped before he go into the trap. But Naruto pulled the chakra string that he connected the explosive cat right behind the pre path. The blast slammed him right down into the web. Naruto grinned, but he had to duck, avoiding the buzz saw. As the robot path came towards him, his arm shifting into a cannon of some kind. Rainia exploded through a wall, showing the robot path with debris. As Pain Bud turned to swipe at the puppet, as Naruto glanced over the sea, damn it. As the long hair path, the human path was cutting, the Prita path out to one of those black rods. Rainia spinned on her tail, whipping out the slam, the robot path aside. 
as he flipped on her tail and flew off with her. If he didn't think of something to break his stalemate soon, he was going to run out of tricks. Meanwhile, Harrison leaped inside, avoiding another invisible blast. Five seconds that appeared to be the minimum recharge before Payne could use the explosion blast again. He had the bruise in his chest to confirm the little experiment from the repelling jutsu. As he extended Enman swinging forward, but Tendo moved to the side. But Harrison then drive his weapon into the ground, digging it out. As the staff thrust him forward as he speed through Hansen and took in a deep breath. As a dragon made from flames rushed towards Tendo Payne, but the ground burst open in front of him as it was a centipede that the animal path had conjured up. He hadn't yet seen the limit of what the summoning path could summon, but he hadn't seen a limit yet. This was now another animal. As he landed, as a large rhinoceros came rushing in from his left, Enma smashed into it though, crashing it into the ground. Thank you, Ulfren, he said, as he felt a bit winded already. Not ready to be put down, but he hadn't exerted himself like this in years. Thank me by surviving, Harrison. You haven't made it this far to be brought down by some upstart claiming to be God. Enma was cut off as he was thrown back violently as he smashed right through a building by the almighty push. Harrison didn't miss a beep as he flipped and threw out a handful of shuriken as he sped through Hansen as each shuriken multiplied to 20. Payne simply drawn the chakra out and blocked anyone at him that got too close to him. Is this all you have for me, Hokage? Old monkeys and brick the metal. You were once called a god yourself, but age has crippled you. Sir Toby smashed, he brought his hand back up as Enma fly right into his palm. On the contrary, he just gave me much wisdom, perspective, and pleasure of seeing new generation rise up to surpass your predecessors as a shadow started to descend. As Pain looked up, as Yamabunta crashed down on the ground, dropping like a meteor, destroying everything around him, creating a huge crater, as a panda came forward, but Yamabunta simply sliced it right in half. Sir to be late, Sensei. As Jiraiya landed right beside Yerzon, these ugly bastards are all over the village and I had to put most of them down with Gamma Hero and Gamma Tin. Your timing is impeccable as always, Jiraiya. Jiraiya cracked his neck as he watched the other two paths watching them. So these are the guys that took down Hanzo. Gamma Bunta was pushed back as he destroyed a couple of house by him being thrown like that. As I unravel, Tendo came out of the crater, Jiraiya Sensei. I was beginning to wonder if he would make an appearance. Jeria froze. Was he seen right? Yaiko? Meanwhile, Kisame had he had to dodge. Yes, he had to increase his speed to the limit to dodge these blows. No matter what he did, there was no blocking them because the blows were throwing people back. Well, him, with one hit. He was even free to use Samihata to block the blows. Samihata has already lose a couple of scales after the green beast entered the fifth gate. Guy was no on the sticks as he moved like a one-man hurricane and kissed me love every moment of it. He hasn't faced a brutal opponent like this in years with brutal strength to match him. This is what Kisame lived for as he spin around and drives Samiata forward but the guy vanished a burst of speed once again. As Samiata was running low after stealing the chakra and Kisame was running low as well. Every time they managed to graze past the green beast they barely got nothing. Whatever the technique the man was using it seemed to be blocking Samiata somehow. As the man appeared above him and strike him down, he was sent deep down into the water that he summoned. Samiata rolled onto his sleeve and started murdering his body. As they were getting pummeled out there, Kisame felt it, yes, as him and Samiata started to merge, becoming shark like. As he looked up to see Guy leaped in the air, as Kisame then watched as Guy thrust out his fist, fireballs started to rain down. Kisa missed him the scarf. What did the fire do against the water? But the things start to hit the water, steam start to go everywhere as they start to rain down with such force. Kisa me then felt that shiver went down his spine. Meanwhile, as Kakazu was facing off against Asuma and his group, as someone is approaching from behind, he turned the skin on his arm, hardened as he thrust it forward. His new attacker sidestepped his attack and came towards him with a following grace. He didn't even need to see the eyes, just by seeing the footwork he knew it was a Hayuga. Her fingers slammed into his body, in that vital point he wanted to laugh that would have crippled someone else but his body was too hard to penetrate. Hinata sent Shikamaru as a fire and wind hard shifted around to face Hinata. She was caught off guard by the failure of her attack as she think 
that she could paralyze him but she never expected skin to be so tough as he did at the last moment before she interact with him but shikamaru attacked her shot and ruled her out of the way as a combination attack destroyed the ear that she was standing at hinata hayuga hinata takazu recognized her name she wasn't as worthy as asuma but she was a clan heiress and that would give him a bit of money yes he should take her as well he moved forward but he blinked in shock as she shot forward as well to his surprise she shot right into his chest but these were not gonna he winced in pain as the thing broke through his guard this was not the jayugan strike what was this as he looked to see her fists her palms coated in a blue substance that were resembling dragons as she smashed them hard she quickly passed by the earth technique and destroyed his heart reduced into pulp as he could feel the wind heart taking over for that one but he knew that playing dead was just a waste of time because of those eyes that she had as he cursed it didn't matter he would just take her heart as payment meanwhile Hidan was trapped at a tree wrapped around his entire body ensnaring him as a woman appeared right in front of him as she pulled back her kunai but before she could come closer he beat down hard on his tongue severing the tip the pain it shattered the genjutsu as he shot forward towards her wasting no time as he was about to have her now but suddenly more wood wrapped around his body blood filled his mouth as he was impaled he tried to bite his tongue once again as the blood was just pulling into his mouth even more but it it was not breaking this is not an illusion a mass figure landed from the rooftop as more wood came from the ground and wrapped around Hidan as they constrict and break his arms he laughed though as more blood filled his mouth at the moment Dater was furious those goddamn eyes Kakashi the copy ninja he had one of those eyes as the man had revealed his Sharingan surviving the blast just being an electric clone as well suddenly the place started to shift around him he quickly pulsed his chakra to break this genjutsu as he swept to the side just in time to dodge the lightning covered arm that was going to pierce right through his chest instead it ripped his arm right off as he winks out in pain but he kept his mouth shut as his good hand spit out a wob of clay that broke his fall as he was now one arm less and the copper ninja was nowhere to be seen first itachi now this clone he was going to destroy he was going to destroy them all he was going to destroy everything meanwhile sasuke had improved a little child that asked him to help with that technique has improved a lot experience fighting through a war had let sasuke know what worked and what did not through that he built up a large repertoire of ninjutsu that he blend right into his fighting mostly lightning techniques well that was expected because he was fighting mostly kumo ninjas where he copied their techniques as sasuke was light in nature as well so the techniques were more advanced and stronger as he could also do things with the shidori that the creator could have never dreamed to do where kakashi had improved the power into the lightning blade sasuke had focused on the shape but it still wasn't enough it actually diverted sasuke threw it to the side slipping an explosive tag on it as sasuke threw the blade at him but it actually moved forward and dodged it as the thing exploded behind him and reached forward towards the ice sasuke leaped back as itachi placed him in another genjutsu meanwhile Naruto dived through a window as an explosion happened behind him outside as he ripped off the remaining jacket off of him the moment he felt the human path follow him he substituted with the clone as he released all the explosive as the entire house was blown to pieces as Naruto sprinted out through another window the azure path was waiting for him and so was rainia as Rainia grabbed his legs and pulled him down below, Kane swooped down as Naruto grabbed onto her as she flew him straight up to a building. The Predapath then appeared right in front of him, its arms extended wide to grab Naruto. But Naruto used his strength to so lift up the roof tile and throw them at him. All he could do was to raise his arm to block them, after all, they had no chakra in them. As the roof tile smashed into his guard, as Naruto raced past him, he burst through the door of his building as he quickly made his way inside, sprinting up the right side wall. The three paths follow him but he already vanished. As a grin came on his face. You're in my world now his voice said. Echoing everywhere around. The three puppets fanned out rushing through the building. It was only the fact for one of them to spot him. Once one of them had where he was. The three of them would know where he is. So he wouldn't be escaping anywhere. They were going to make sure of that as they spread through the building. Quickly as possible. He had no intention of making them find him. His first job was to grab a spear jacket. 
to store his item inside of it as he made his way into his workshop. After a couple of seconds, the Azure Python came in there as well, but the only thing he saw was puppets, lifeless puppets all over the walls. As he walked further into the room, all the puppets on the wall, all the Rainias, lashed out towards him. A thick tail strike him right in his leg, bringing the robot path to his knees. He raised an arm as he turned to a saw, but sticky webs trapped it to the ground. Another puppet threw herself on top of him, burying him with her body. His Akaski robe was ripped off as four other arms came from his body as he threw the puppet off of him. But more puppets simply latched onto him, trying to bury him with their numbers. The crown of his head then opened up as the thing exploded in a blast that sent all of them sailing as his arms then shifted into something else. Another bus saw a humming blade, a cannon, two poles crackling with electricity, something that looked like a vacuum cleaner and something with three cables coming from it that he was slashing around as his six arms were ready to take on anything and at that very moment human power rushed in as well. As Nurta smiled as Tucker strings lashed out and connected to the robot's past body, as Nurta didn't waste any time trying to break pain's will. He simply flooded with the Kayubi Shocker. Suyen, Juzu, he said, as it was too much, as the Renegon simply vanished, replaced by a slitted red eyes, as all of the information of the puppet used sprang into his mind. The human pad was caught unaware as the robot pad spinned towards him. He tried to leap back, but he was wrapped up by the wires as the Chakra Tenon just charged. Nurtu didn't hold back, using all the chakra that Pain had re left remaining in it and fired all at one burst. The human part was gone, his body was burst into pieces everywhere. Just in time though, as Pain managed to get his will as he started to fight back. But the part was vulnerable while Pain was fighting against the chakra of the Kayube. Ten water cannons started to charge from Rainia's tail as they all fired off and teared through the robot pat body, tearing it to pieces like it was nothing. After that, the pre the pat came rushing into the room as he rushed through all of the puppets, caught them to fall limp from just absorbing the chakra after going near them. As Nurka snarled, he was by far the most annoying of the pats. As he jumped out of his hiding place, dropped into his hench that made him look like a common dummy. As he jumped through the window, catching himself on the next wall. As Nurka sighed, as Chakra tried to attach each finger. As he apologized for what he was about to do to himself. As he pulled them, the entire building imploded upon itself, destroying the thing like an explosion raining down crushing everything inside the entire thing was just a smoking pile of debris now absorb that said naruto as he got back to his feet and started to move off as naruto felt a sensation before he could blink he was smashed into the wall destroy as many bodies as you like it do not matter because they're not facing a man or an army you're facing a god and you will succumb to a god so you might as well give up Killing Saucer really didn't do any favors to your organization because you should know I'm really bad at giving up. As he briefly wondered where the Hokage was, this was Pain though Pain and how did he manage to get over here? Thankfully, he saw a staff in the ear, fin off a giant, what was that, a dog? Our skinless bat with wings. Pain then extended the chakra rod as he raised his hand. Universal pull. As Naruto was yanked forward, but this time he was prepared. At the last moment he substituted with a transformed dummy, as it wasn't Naruto that was impaled, it was Conan. As Naruto wasn't sure what to expect, hoping for a moment of hesitation, but Pain froze his eyes wide. As you could see, the man was shocked. As Azura then came and smashed her fist down, left, right, left, right, left, right. She kept on dropping fists into the area, as Naruto was blown back by the force. He then noticed something though, the dog. It vanished. The thing that was fighting up there with Sir Toby. As he kept on dropping the fist when he noticed Ashura was being lifted off off the ground. It was then he saw a pain in the center as the man body was torn to close. But other than that he was fine. His hands raised as Ashura was thrown back before the violent force connected to everything else. Almighty. Push. As everything was sent sailing away as Naruto crashed into a building as his neck twists as he groaned pain appeared right in front of him but pain didn't look at him he just raised onto the other side as a real Naruto was pulled out of his hiding spot no more tricks pain says he blasts Naruto back into the wall as Naruto wins in pain but that wasn't what caused him so much pain 
he tried to reach. First pop it over there with his soccer threads, but nothing. As Nurk looked at his arm, no, nothing was there. As he realized what happened, Pain had sliced off his left arm. He winced so more as a chakra rod drive right into his side. The substitution that he was trying to pull off with Dami, his chakra, was completely haywired at the moment so he could not. As his chakra network in his body felt like he was being pushed aside by this overwhelming force. Enough struggling, said Pain, his voice, sounding with emotions. See the futility of your resistance. He stood, he was confident in chakra rod ability. Then Naruto wouldn't do anything. I have already won. Konoha falls around you and Kumo will soon follow. Your petty struggles are merely the fleeing of a child, unable to grasp the true picture. Naruto cough, but he grinned. You really like the sound of your own voice, don't you? Pain eyes narrowed as he stepped forward, but Naruto laughed. Wouldn't do that. You won't learn where Konan is. Naruto wasn't really expecting Pain to fall for it. But after seeing his reaction to that transformed puppet, he had to try, because that was just Dami in a transformation to throw the man off guard. The slight hesitation was all that Nurt needed as pain eyes widened as stalker threads attached to his body. As someone I once expected said, a real puppeteer is not defeated while there is still a body left to control. As Nurt had the chakra rod in his hand, as he's been pouring chakra into it ever since it stabbed into him, as he launched forward and stabbed it right in the pain that was currently under his control. As he felt his control break at that moment, as he was practically pushing all of his remaining chakra into that rod, trying to overwhelm it, it worked the other way around. So if he could overwhelm it with his own chakra, it would overwhelm the system as well. As Nurta pinky finger twitch, as Dami lodged from the ground there was thing gun. Dami smashed it into the man's back. As Nurta poured every ounce of chocolate he had left, as he drive right into him, the rusting gun imploded upon pain. Until the man eyes, the Renegon vanished. When that happened, Dami collapsed onto the ground in a pile of heap. As Nurta collapsed as well, the arm was severed neatly. As he looked at the stump, well that would take some time to get used to, he thought. Meanwhile, a monster, that's what he was. Kisame was once called a monster before he gained the monocle of the tailless steel beast. But my guy, he was a monster. The mad attack had decimated his water dome by the force of his punches. Kisame might have been able to retaliate if not for the man next attack. He created a shockwave that decimated everything in his path. As Kisame was in a bad state as he barely escaped, he was still merging with Samihata. As Guy was looking for him, as a group of Anbuds leaped over the wall, my foe, as Kisame thought that he was caught as his heart nearly jumped. We have not finished our conquest yet. Fleeing from the battle is most unyouthful. As he watched this guy leaped over the building that he was hiding right under. As he made his way deeper into the shadows, he should be completely undetectable by this. While fused with Samihata, he wasn't even seen as a chakra, signature at all. But he watched this guy kept on jumping overhead, searching for him. He turned the corner to spot a strange sight. Toby? Meanwhile, Kakazu made this too. Mass flew upwards as they merged together. They breathed out water and fired at the same time, covering the ear in a mist. As apparently the Nara has been waiting for that. As he lock the construct, the Kakas who had merged the two of them together in place with the shadow. The Akamichi then grew to 20 times his size, towering over the buildings. As Kakazu quickly unraveled the two hearts, as the water heart was crushed to oblivion, but the fire heart escaped. As he let it rain fire down on the ground. Using that as a distraction, he was losing too much from this and not gaining anything in the process. The best thing to do right now is a tactical retreat. The moment he went around the corner, he felt the arm placed on his shoulder, surprising him as he spin around with his enhanced fist. But he was sucked away in a swirling vortex. At the moment, he now was impaled all over his body by wooden stakes. As he was then pulled into the ground, buried by an earth technique. He forced his head up, tearing his own flesh against the wooden spikes, glaring at the Anvu who used his wooden technique on him. He was unable to speak either, thanks to the spike going through the back of his head, forcing his mouth open. As he looked up, Sid Man finished his hand signs, as a dome started to descend upon him to completely cover him. But he felt the ear shift, as he saw orange and a spinning red eye, before he was sucked away in a void. Moments later, as Toby walked around, 
The Akaski may not be a lot in number, but their strength can rival an army. Pain might have failed to capture the Kayube, but the destruction on Konoha, this will never be forgotten. If he was lucky, this might even ignite a power struggle. As he disappeared in a swirling vortex as he appeared, a few feet away from where Deidre was fighting that man. God, how easy would the beast just appear and stab him right in the back? But no, he had given up on this world and all of the pain and everything that came with it. Kono has Shinobi spot his cloak and tried to run him through that sword, but they just passed right through him as he drive a kuna into the man's neck. As the man dropped down dead the confused look on his face, as he looked back up to see that Deidre was losing, the damage to his arm was too much and that one was using it to his advantage. As Deidre ripped his shirt off his mouth already tearing through the hole on his chest. As there was another mouth there, Toby figured that was his cue to leave as this man was going to turn himself into a... No, he stopped. As he saw, Deidre started turning into a small black ball, but the world around him started to shift. As he watched, Kakashi. Kakashi, how dare you? How dare Kakashi use his eye like that? How dare he pollute the Mangetio barn from ring sacrifice? Deidre was twisted out of existence. Toby decided to leave because he was too angry and not certain of what he would do if he didn't leave immediately. He needed to go and check on Itachi, the only rogue in all of this. The loss of Deidre was one thing, but he couldn't afford for that part to go on Ryle. He knew that Itachi would ignore pain though, for his personal business with his brother. In fact, he was counting on it. Sasuke would make such a useful tool with the right encouragement. At the moment, Itachi wanted his brother to defeat him, because that would be the legacy of the Uchiha, as his brother would be the hero for taking down the man that massacred the clan. He wasn't sure what happened in the forest three years ago, as his brother was still in the village because he was sure though that it was Naruto that sealed away the curse mark. That was a mixed blessing because if Sasuke didn't know about it, he couldn't be tempted into using it. But it also meant that it would be extremely difficult to be removed. Then there was the other problem, but he was working on that. As the both of them started to clash again with Sasuke tearing on Itachi to illusion as he made his way towards him. As Itachi then jumped away, as Sasuke blinked twice, Itachi noticed it. Hmm. Is your eyes okay, little brother? He asked. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. I assume that you read the tablet as well. As Sasuke, eyes narrowed just for a bit, making Itachi know. Then you must understand what it caused for those eyes to be awakened and what it will cause to regain your vision. Yes, little brother. It will be your eyes that will become my light, said Itachi. As it was an illusion that was speaking, Sasuke started to become a bit frantic. The real Itachi appeared behind him. Sasuke never knew that he was that close. As Itachi sliced right at his legs, cutting some ears that made Sasuke drop to the ground. He would heal and recover soon enough, but for now, as Sasuke started to back away from him until clapping could be heard. Bravo, said Toby. I haven't seen something this fun since the last Princess Gill movie. Oh, don't mind me. Carry on, I believe this is the best part. Madara, Itachi said. What do you want? Sasuke glanced up with confusion. Did he just say Madara? Oh, nothing much. But I do have to argue against the wages of such a... He glanced at Sasuke. Sasuke saw the Sharingan spinning in the eye hole. Natural young talent. I don't suppose that you will mind handing him over. I would be remiss in failing to teach Uchiha the true ways of our clans. Don't you think? This is none of your business, said Itachi, his eyes narrowing dangerously. As Toby simply laughed as he made his way over. Oh, but I disagree. I have big plans for Sasuke here. Once we get him a bit of truth, of course. And it's not like you can stop me, Itachi. You cannot hide from my eyes, his voice said. No sounding deep and dark. The disease has almost reached full term. I bet you're even struggling to stand right now. You just exert yourself to a limit. How long do you have left? Days? Hours? As Itachi, knowing that the pain was unbearable, but he did not release his facade. So no, I think I'll have a talk with Sasuke. As Toby raised his hand and placed on Sasuke's shoulder. But Itachi strike so fast. It was so fast Toby was shocked. Itachi never once revealed his Susanoo to this man. The sword of Tatsuka was able to seal away anything. All he needed was a single moment of vulnerability when Madara thought that he won and was not using his intangibility. So Itachi practiced and practiced and practiced to release his Susano at a moment's second. So he could do this. He was waiting for this opportunity to deal with this masked man. Itachi wore his first, smiling ears, all of grim satisfaction as he watched 
Madara or whosoever be drawn into his son. Oh, he felt something run down his cheek as it was blood. As he dropped to the ground on his knees. But he had to play the act. Your eyes are my little brother, he said. As he reached towards Sasuke. Only mine, Sus. He collapsed down. As he tapped Sasuke in the forehead first. Before his hand fully fell right on Sasuke's lap. Giving him one last genjutsu. To ensure that his brother's hatred for him would still be there. To ensure that his brother would be seen as a hero. As he hoped his brother wouldn't notice the tears. Mingling with the blood on his cheeks. Then Itachi Uchiha knew nothing more. As he died. Meanwhile. Kid. You there? Time to get up. As Naruto blinked several times. As he slowly. Felt something in his mouth. Through this. As he burst it was a blood pill. As he slowly regained his vision. As he saw that he was Jiraiya. Who was right in front of him. So. He didn't bleed out and die. He was still alive huh. But guys, if you want to see this part, if you still know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. But I'm off for now. See you guys soon. Bye, guys. Peace.